Hi, my name is Jason Gilmore, and I'm CTO of Dream Factory. Other Dream Factory Academy videos show you how easy it is to interact with third-party data sources. While making your data available through easily accessible APIs is a huge step forward, the ultimate outcome could be catastrophe if these APIs aren't properly secured. Fortunately, Dream Factory offers a multi-layered security model capable of protecting your APIs using a variety of industry standard methodologies. In this video, I'll introduce you to the most fundamental and commonly used safeguard, namely role-based access control. But before we jump into role-based access controls, let's take a quick moment to review Dream Factory's key security features. Dream Factory offers five security layers which are naturally intended to protect your APIs, but also to help you restrict request volume and monitor API access in real time. First, and most fundamentally, each API is automatically protected by an API key. There's no such thing as a publicly accessible API in Dream Factory, meaning a simple oversight won't be the cause of a security problem. Further, you can optionally require users to authenticate before accessing an API thanks to Dream Factory's support for a variety of user authentication protocols. These include basic authentication, LDAP, Active Directory, OAuth, and single sign-on. The single sign-on and Active Directory capabilities are particularly popular solutions within our user base. You also have role-based access controls, or RBAC, which is the subject of this video. RBAC ensures you can tightly restrict access to specific API endpoints. And in a moment, I'll, I'll return to why this capability is such a powerful platform feature. Next up is Dream Factory's rate limiting feature. This capability allows you to control how many requests can be sent to an API over a defined period of time. You can restrict request volume in quite a few different ways, including according to service, user, endpoint, method, or any combination thereof. Finally, powerful monitoring capabilities are made available thanks to integration with the powerful Elastic Stack. Thanks to this integration, you can create real-time dashboards and reports capable of monitoring all aspects of your Dream Factory environment. And oh, by the way, all of the security features I describe here can be taken advantage of without requiring you to write a single line of code. Now that you have a general understanding of Dream Factory's security layers, Let's return to the primary topic of this video by discussing various commonplace RBAC scenarios. Now, probably the most common access control applied to APIs pertains to restricting database access. For instance, you can create a role that ensures the API can only be accessed in a read-only fashion, which of course would be very useful if you only wanted to present data to various clients rather than allowing them to insert or update data. You can further restrict access to specific tables, stored procedures, or views. And furthermore, you can mix and match capabilities within a specific role. So, for instance, you could grant access to a specific view, a stored procedure, and a table all within the context of a single role. Now, when defining these capabilities, you're not required to provide wide open access either, meaning you can restrict endpoint access according to method. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, allowing read-only access to a specific table, but also read, write, and update access to a different table. Further, you're not restricted to applying role-based access controls to APIs generated by Dream Factory. And this is a really powerful feature that I don't think is, is used enough within the platform. You could 
mount any third-party API to the platform, whether the API is one your organization subscribes to or perhaps has built internally. And once that API is mounted, you're free to attach access controls to the API. And this could be very useful because you might create one role which ensures unrestricted administrative access to the API and other rules which severely restrict access to perhaps maybe the read-only endpoints or other endpoints that are only intended to be accessible by a certain department. Now, hopefully your mind is racing regarding the possibilities here. Next, we'll put concept into action by defining and testing an RBAC used to restrict access to a database API. What you're looking at is an early access release of Dream Factory 3. The most visible change is the brand new user interface. Although this release includes quite a few other useful features and bug fixes, including updated version control integrations, Python 3 scripting support, and several new automated installers. However, if you look at the current production version of Dream Factory, you'll find that this UI, while it does look different, everything I do in the following examples can be re replicated exactly in the production interface because the UX has not changed. So the tabs are the same, the menus are the same, it's just that the fonts, the, the colors, and, and uh, so on have changed. Now what I've done is I've already prepped this example by generating a MySQL database API. This API, shown here, connects to a MySQL database named Employees. Specifically, you're looking at the API documentation, which is automatically generated alongside the API. For example, if I scroll down to the Retrieve one or more records um, entry, press try it out, and then scroll down and press execute, you'll see that the employee records are returned in J JSON format. Right? Now if all of this is new to you, I suggest checking out the other beginner videos at academy.dreamfactory.com or on our YouTube channel. Now, because I'm logged in as an administrator, I have complete access to this API. But what if you wanted to grant access to, for example, only the employees table? Or what about read-only access? Or what if you wanted to grant insert privileges to the employees table and read privileges to the department's table? To accomplish this, you'll define a role. Roles are managed within the Roles section located at the top of the screen. Let's go there and begin by creating a read-only role. You're currently looking at the Dream Factory Role Management Interface. We're going to create a role, so I'll click on the Create tab located to the left. Next, we'll define a new role. I'll call this role HR, for example. You can call it anything you please. However, we suggest providing a descriptive title or name and description. So for the description, I'll use Acme Incorporated HR Staff. We'll set it to active because we're going to use it right away. And next, I'll click on the Access tab. It's here where you're going to define the role privileges or capabilities. Begin by pressing the plus sign located on the right side of the interface. Next, you'll be prompted to choose the desired service. I'll select MySQL. And once I do that, all of the service endpoints will be populated in the component dropdown. Now because we're going to create a read-only role, I'm going to leave this drop-down set to star, meaning everything. And next what we're going to do is make sure that this role can access all of these endpoints in a read-only fashion. 
So I'm going to click on the Access drop-down, and here you're going to see a list of HTTP methods. Because we're defining a read-only role, I'll select Get and close the drop-down. Finally, you have the option of constraining the requester type. Two options are available, API and script. Typically, you, you'll choose API because this role is designated for API access. However, you can instead or additionally choose script if you want to allow access to event scripts. With these settings in place, I'll go ahead and press Save. And next, we'll define a new API key and assign this new rule to it. All that remains is for us to generate a new API key and associate it with the HR role. To do so, I've navigated to the Apps tab located at the top of the screen. Next, I'll click the Create button located on the left side of the interface. And it's here where I will assign an application or an API key name. And we'll call it HR Application and give it a description of, oh, how about Acme Incorporated HR application. I'll make it active because we're going to use the key right away. And then I'll set the app location to no storage required. Since we would presumably be using this key in conjunction with a web or a mobile application hosted elsewhere. Finally, I'll choose the HR role, which is the role we, we created a moment ago, and press Save. Now we've been returned to the App Key Management screen, and at the bottom you'll see our newly generated API key. So next we're going to use this key, so go ahead and if you're following along, copy that key into your clipboard. To test the key, I've opened an HTTP client called Insomnia. You might be familiar with other HTTP clients such as Postman. I'm particularly fond of Insomnia thanks to its streamlined interface and ability to synchronize examples with other members of my team. So at the top of the screen, you'll see the API URL used to retrieve the employee records. I've also added the DreamFactory API key header and associated value, which is the API key we generated just a few minutes ago. Now, if I press send to retrieve the records, it works as expected. If I, for example, attempt to retrieve department records, this should work also. Uh, if I spell it correctly, departments, and sure enough, our departments have been returned. However, if I attempt to create a new employee by posting to this endpoint and passing along a request body, I'll receive a 401 unauthorized because, of course, we configured that role to be read-only. Now that you understand how to manage Dream Factory roles, I invite you to return to the role interface and experiment with other configurations. If you have any questions regarding the features described in this video or would like a live demonstration, I invite you to contact us at support at dreamfactory.com. Also, you can learn more about Dream Factory at guide.dreamfactory.com.